everybody so a little different theme to today's video perfect that i'm coming from you in the kitchen because um it's all about quick easy not necessarily quick but easy meals that i prepare on a regular basis for my family so i filmed these little clips that you're about to see as i was vlogging so it's very informal um it's my first attempt really at putting together something like this so let me know what do you think of this style? There's always room for improvement, I know, but this is my first shot, so be gentle. And just for the ease of getting the recipes, uh, I'm filming this before I've actually thought out how to do this, but I'm thinking if there's a direct link because I'm following somebody else's recipe, um, I will put that link below. But I think the easiest thing to do is to put it in a blog post where I can write it out and do like recipe cards on my blog. So I'm gonna link to that blog post in the description box below and there'll probably be an I dot thing to click on to take you to that particular um, blog post. And if you really like these, this kind of video, I should say, let me know and I will try to make more of them. Um, also, let's like just start a little recipe sharing thing right now. So if you have a favorite go-to recipe that you can easily link to um, for like a weeknight meal for the family, put that in the comments below. Let's help each other out because I don't know about you, but I get in a rut and I tend to make like the same four or five things all the time and it's nice to try out some things. So without further ado, here is my attempt at sharing with you some of my family's favorite meals. Tonight I wanted to share with you our first, my first recipe idea, which is an easy, quick thing I can make relatively ahead of time and run out the door and that is nachos. I have a meeting tonight to go to Shane's on his way home from football practice. Michael's actually out of town um, playing golf with his brother. So I have assembled the nachos and I'm hiding them in my microwave because I have a very active one-year-old Weimaraner that will jump up on the counter and eat them. So let me show you what I've assembled. It's really simple. It looks disgusting. So there you have it. And all I've done is browned two pounds of ground meat and I did two pounds which is more than I need because I can put some of that to the side and keep that for lunch um, later on in the week, which I will talk about later. And then all I did was I lined a very old beat up cookie sheet with my favorite aluminum foil, which is the Reynolds nonstick version. And I did one layer of corn tortilla chips. We're gonna ignore the squeaky toy. I did a little bit of cheese. Now in my case, it's faux cheese and I will list the brand that we use. Um, and then I did a little bit, I sprinkled some ground meat. I don't even season the meat. And then a little more of the faux cheese, another layer of tortilla chips, another layer of meat, and another layer of cheese. I have preheated my oven to 400. And I'm just gonna pop it in the oven for about seven to 10 minutes, check on it to see if the cheese has melted. And then once it's out um, and the cheese is melted, you know, it doesn't have to be in for very long because the meat's already cooked then you can add your toppings as you like them. So depending on what people like and what they're allowed to eat, they can add, you can drain some black beans and have that to add. A lot of people like to put sour cream. We use Greek yogurt, that's the only dairy Shane can eat. I don't know why, something about the live cultures. Um, we chop up avocado or get live guacamole, like live. We get um, pre-made guacamole sometimes, a little bit of salsa. Um, whatever you like, you can add on top. And I can put the toppings to one side, leave them out where Shane can get to them, and I can put the plate the nachos for him, put the toppings up, and then go off to my meeting, and he can, you know, fix it when he gets home from practice. Nachos are something that, while they taste pretty good hot, they're still pretty good at room temperature, you know, if I'm not gonna leave them out for more than about, you know, 30 minutes to an hour before he gets home, he's not gonna die of food poisoning. While I've just popped those in the oven, I wanna talk to you about something that I make for lunch. And um, we are big fans of Freebirds or Chipotle here at the uh, Goldberg house. And I'm also a big fan of making lunch ahead of time. Shane leaves for school about 6.30 in the morning, so I am not going to be making lunch at six o'clock in the morning and, and hustling and all that stuff. So I like to make like two, three, up to four days in advance if I can pull it off of lunches. And one of the things we like to do is kind of mimic a steak bowl or chicken bowl. So here's what I made for lunch. I made two of these in advance. Shane had one of these today. So what you have here, doesn't look like much. These are like those little glad plastic containers. Um, this is filet mignon. It's the cheap ones that come in like the little plastic wrap. So um, two little ones, they're like four bucks each. This is a bit of a splurge. You don't have to use filet mignon. 
In fact, I'm gonna make another one of these for Wednesday's lunch. I'm gonna use the leftover ground beef. So ground beef, ground chicken is an easy swap for filet mignon. I have, you can barely see it, but there is some steamed white rice, crushed tortilla chips. There is some of that fake cheese. There's some sour cream in there. Um, I'm gonna add a little salsa to it. And you have yourself a little, a little shredded lettuce I will add in the morning. And now you have a steak bowl. And um, I will put that in Shane's lunchbox. I keep it in the fridge, obviously. I will put that in Shane's lunchbox tomorrow morning with a little ice pack. And he has a microwave in his cafeteria so he can heat this up and you are good to go. So that is an easy lunch. Um, I'm incredibly lazy. My grocery store sells steamable bags of rice. You can do white rice or brown rice. It's about a dollar a bag and you pop it in the microwave for four minutes and it's fluffy and moist and great. And one of those bags is good for two of those size containers. So very economical. And like I said, you can swap out the meat. Sometimes we do ground chicken or ground uh, turkey or ground beef. And you can kind of swap out what you do in there. You can do some steamed veggies. You can do some uh, gravy if you want in there. It's a, it's a hearty meal, especially if you have an athlete or someone who needs to, you know, has a big appetite. It's healthy. And um, there you go. There's a weeknight dinner and a couple weekday lunches for you. We have meetings in the fall almost every Monday night. So I love to either cook some, something I can make ahead of time or something I can whip up really fast and it's reheatable for when various members of the family get home. Like Michael and I will eat after the meeting, but I'm gonna make this before we leave, which is before Shane comes home from football practice. So you see what I mean. So one of the staples that I keep in my freezer that you can whip it up super fast. You don't even have to think ahead of time if you haven't thawed it out because you can just run it under some cold water in the sink and it'll be thawed in five minutes is frozen shrimp. Bag of uh, basically cooked, um, peeled, deveined, tail cut off, ready to eat shrimp. You can saute that so quickly with olive oil, garlic, little lemon juice or lemon zest if you wanna get fancy. Toss it with some pasta, um, again, with a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, a little red pepper flakes. Um, toss in some frozen steamed veggies, which I am doing in the microwave right now. And oh my gosh, you've got a gourmet meal that isn't really gourmet. So I'm gonna throw this together real quickly and um, show you this time. I get to show you the finished product, hopefully before we run out the door. Oh, she's running out the door. I'm filming this in real time, not like set up for you to look pretty. So I've got the water set to boil. I'm steaming my frozen broccoli and I'm heating up a little bit of olive oil. I don't really measure it. I just sort of drizzle it all over the pan. Another time saver, this is sauteed in garlic and those true chefs are all grimacing right now, but this stuff right here, this is um, frozen. Look it up, check this out. Crushed garlic. One of these little cubes is the same as one clove of garlic. You just pop as many as you need right out of the, this little container into the pan. I have found these in numerous grocery stores and they're always in the frozen veggie section. So they also have frozen parsley, frozen basil, some other herbs, but the brand is Dorote, D-O-R-O-T. All right, so I've already gone off recipe a little bit. This recipe calls for a shallot. That's lovely, shallots are great. I don't keep shallots around in my fridge, maybe you do. Um, I have onions though, and they're close enough, and I do keep sweet onions. So that's what I use. I just use one small onion instead of a shallot, not to the end of the world. And I just popped three of those little garlic clove guys into the mix, and it's getting nice and fragrant. So in the meantime, I got my pot boiling here. Sprinkle with red pepper, salt, and black pepper, and uh, saute it until it's cooked through about three minutes. Okay, next you throw in your little shrimp. Shrimps? Shrimp? I don't know. Shrimp. And you don't cook them very long, basically, because they're already cooked. So just kind of toss them around. The idea is to get them coated very well in this garlic shallot olive oil mixture. And we're gonna season them with a little salt, black pepper, and red pepper. About three minutes. So I keep talking about pasta and a bunch of you are probably going, wait, your, gluten, your son anyway is gluten free. What's up with that? We found a brand we really like. This is not sponsored. This is what we use. There's not a ton of different pasta shapes, but this Ronzoni brand um, looks, feels, texture, all of it like flour-based 
pasta. Shrimp are just about done. We take them out, saute the veggies for a little bit, and then throw it all back together, veggies and shrimp, with a little wine, boil off the alcohol, and toss it with the pasta, and then we're done. The pasta's all done. I've put it all together in a big serving bowl here. So you have broccoli. You can do all kinds of veggies. I just did steamed broccoli. Um, and there's a little shrimp beef. And then they say garnish with parsley. Does anybody actually do that? But what I do have, there's a dog on the floor, is this. This is the um, faux cheese that we very much enjoy. Um, it, it is the closest approximation to real cheese we found. And this is the faux parmesan. And they're just gonna, I'm just going to sprinkle that all over and then toss it. And then it is ready to serve. This is breakfast for dinner. We are cooking up chilaquiles, which is a, I think it's Mexican. For sure it's just, I don't know what other countries, but for sure in Mexico, because it's the first place I ate it, was in Puerto Vallarta. It's traditionally a Mexican breakfast, but I've seen it served for lunch and I'm making it for dinner. It's not exactly a traditional recipe and the way I'm making it is more like migas, but basically it's kind of like scrambled eggs with tortilla chips scrambled inside it with a little cheese, a little queso fresco, or sour cream, or in my case, Greek yogurt. And it's it's really good, and then you can serve it with like refried beans on the side, which we're not doing, um, or fried up potatoes. We're gonna just do some hash brown patties that we have. Whatever you feel like. I like breakfast for dinner. I'm a big fan of pancakes for dinner too. Um, not doing that tonight, but I have done it before. Cereal even, just saying. You gotta do, when you gotta feed someone fast, sometimes cereal for dinner is a lot of fun. Anyway, tonight is chilaquiles. I will um, include the recipe I'm following today. She's not calling it chilaquiles, she's calling it green chili migas. They are making the tortilla chips from scratch. I am not that good. I am using these guys because that's the ones we have. Also, they are gluten free. Although really, all corn tortilla chips should be gluten free, just an FYI and um, using uh, Monterey Jack cheese would have been good. They, the store was out, so I just grabbed the cheddar version of this Go Veggie, Faux Veggie, Faux Cheese. And green chili is a can of chilies. Um, queso Fresco is the cheese of choice for this recipe. Shane can't eat that anyway. We don't have it, so they recommend sour cream instead. Shane can't eat that either, but we do use in place of sour cream is Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt, which he can eat, strangely. It's the bacteria in it. It's good for you. Um, so I have everything prepped. This is one of those things that takes five minutes to throw together. You can do it all on the stove, or if you have an oven-proof skillet, you can finish it off in the oven. I'm gonna do it all on the stove. It's easy to stage. You can, you know, have your eggs whisked, and ignore my kitchen towel. You can have your eggs whisked and ready to go, and yes, this is a very, very old Pampered Chef bowl. And um, lightly seasoned with salt and pepper. I've got my fake butter ready to melt in the pan. I got my cheese, I have my sour cream measured out. I have it way back there so Rowdy doesn't eat it. Just gonna wait for Shane to get home from football practice and while he's showering, I'm gonna whip this up. Okay, dinner is done. It took 10 minutes all in and here is it plated. I know, it doesn't look particularly pretty. Hello Fresh, I am not. And Michael's verdict is? Really good, I like it a lot. Alrighty then, let's get to it. Meatloaf is an unsung hero. It is easy to make. There are a million variations. The meatloaf that I make, I got from this cookbook that I stole from my mother. Some of the substitutions that I make, it calls for milk. I obviously use almond milk. I use unflavored, unsweetened almond milk. It calls for bread. I use gluten-free bread. It asks for cheddar cheese. I use the Go Veggie cheddar cheese. And um, the last three ingredients are to make your own barbecue sauce to put on the top. Most times I get lazy and I just take whatever our favorite barbecue sauce is and pour it over the top. So it's a long introduction, let's get started. Okay, so the base of the meatloaf is pretty simple. It's just eggs and milk, basically like you're making scrambled eggs. Now a lot of people, a lot of meatloaf recipes call for breadcrumbs. What makes this different is it does not. You use actual bread, you just crumble it up. Now these are the gluten-free, bread that we use. I love. We get it at Sam's Club. I don't know where else you can get it. The brand is France Gluten-Free Mountain White. That's the package. If I can find it somewhere else, I will link it. I will list the name regardless so you can look for it. 
Um, like I said, so far I've only seen it in Sam's Club. And then you just throw in the cheese, the beef, mix it all together, put it in your loaf pan, and then top it with your barbecue sauce. And then you just pop it in the oven and bake it for an hour. I used ground chicken today. You can use any kind of ground meat. I've made it with ground turkey, ground chicken, ground beef. I imagine you can make it with ground just about anything. It is all done. Actually, it's 9 o'clock at night. Back from my meeting. And I just want to show you really quickly what it looks like. Just plated. I had like baked potato and steamed veggies for Shane, but... 9 o'clock at night, I don't need all that. I'm just gonna have my slab of meatloaf and go to bed. Cause this is ground chicken, it looks a little weird, but here it is. You can see the melted cheese and the bread and there's your barbecue sauce. I'm just gonna pop this in the microwave and heat it up real quickly and then go to bed. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you try any of these recipes. Get in your kitchen, start cooking, let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.